So about a week ago, I randomly thought, hey, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, that was a really good movie. And now I want to talk about it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Look, I really need this. The script to my Our House Peak Fiction video has gone over 2,800 words and I've only talked about the first season. I've still got to write about the second and third seasons, as well as discussion on characters, animation, music, etc. So, in the meantime, let's go over another amazing story with a queer girl as the lead. First off, this movie is so fucking funny. I was laughing so hard re watching this that it got to a point where I could no longer laugh because my throat physically couldn't take it. Not good! There's a pack of wild vacuums! We have been summoned into the field of battle for a murder. Oh no. Ouch, the pain. Ouch, this is humiliating. <laughs> Never mind. I know comedy is subjective and all, but I don't understand how someone could watch this and not get at least a chuckle out of it. Eric and DebraBot5000 alone make this film peak comedy. Eric, DebraBot, get those robots! Okay. okay, I found one. Me too. Yay! Yay! The other ones! Stop, right. The animation is amazing. I know everyone has said this like a million times, but fuck it, the talented people at Sony Animation still don't get enough praise for this movie. Everyone talks about the 2D animation that makes the film look like it was actually made by Katie herself, but two things I don't think get talked about enough are the character design and colour palette. In a world where Disney seems to be obsessed with giving each film the same general character design, it's really refreshing to have characters that actually have very unique silhouettes. The story is pretty basic, but I don't really see that as an issue, because the focus of the film is its characters and their relationships. And oh boy, those characters and relationships are phenomenal. Maybe it's because of my poor relationship with my father, that will likely never work out, but seeing Katie and her dad rekindle their bond they used to share just warms my heart. Katie's bond with Aaron is also great. It's something I heavily relate to. I'm the youngest of four siblings, so I know that feeling of having to say goodbye to an older sibling leaving home all too well. And because of that personal connection, I can say that their relationship is incredibly well written. Not just because of Aaron's sadness of having to say goodbye to his sister, but in all the interactions they share. Aaron alone is also a really awesome character. It's pretty obvious he's autistic, with a special interest in dinosaurs. And as an autistic person, I think it's a great rep. Katie is also a great rep. She may not be as explicitly autistic as her brother, but I still definitely get neurodivergent vibes from her. But she's obviously canonically queer though. I love the little details they include with that, like her little pride pin and the little love hearts when she's texting Jade. This line is also so fucking queer. My parents haven't figured me out yet. To be fair, it took me a while to figure myself out. And so are those outfits. Like, holy shit, Katie might just have the gayest wardrobe in history. I know I also can heavily relate to her due to us both having a love of cinema. That's honestly the best part of The Mitchells vs. The Machines. It really feels like a movie that was tailor-made specifically for me, and that's why I love it so much. So yeah, this was a pretty short video, and future videos will also be pretty short, since I need to put most of my effort and time into that big Owl House video. So as always, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, like and subscribe to make me smile, and I'll see you later.